Shapes are an important element in painting and composition, and making them bold as regards their type of shape, their colour, their contrasting values can help give a painting a bit more impact. So in this demo, I'm going to focus on shapes that I see in a scene and not think about, well, here is, here is a cafe scene, here are people, here are tables, here are chairs. Almost, almost like imagine I'm, uh, uh, or, or imagine being, being like an alien and you've just been beamed down from outer space to planet Earth and you've been given the task of painting this scene. But you don't know what a person looks like. You don't know what a table is. You don't know what a chair is. Um, all you see in front of you are objects and, and shapes. So my approach on this one is to focus on the lighter areas for my sketch and painting. Focus on these light areas here, uh, tabletops, light hitting the, the backs of some figures, the light hitting the tops of the, the parasols, and then paint negatively around it. So we're leaving the shape exposed, um, bare paper, all right, so nice and bright, and then we're painting darker around it. That's negatively, that's, that's how to paint negatively in watercolour. We're painting around these shapes with darker paint to exposed to to develop that shape so that would be the first step thinking about those lighter shapes and then adding in of course with watercolor adding in darker values into the painting to further define those shapes to create what we see um here as people tables colors they will they will appear from hopefully from those shapes well that's my plan anyway um, we'll see how it goes. So this is this is my subject uh, for this demo. And as I always do in my demos, I just take a little bit of time. And I, I think a lot of people actually find this quite useful. My own particular process in deconstructing a scene, just thinking about the, the subject in front of us and how we're going to um, plan it and, and approach it and execute the the painting. So this one, I'm thinking about these light shapes. I'm not thinking about here's four or five people, table in front of us, chair, all these bright chairs. Um, <laughs> quite difficult to to uh, you know thinking about those chairs, all those complex shapes, the backs of the tables. So these lighter areas, well. Um, Light area number one is this table top here. So that area there, for example. All right, so that's one area. Um, on the left-hand side, we've got the shape, fairly sort of geometric shape here um, around there. We've got that little bit of light down there. We've got uh, the light on this guy here the light hitting the back of that figure we've got the far this far parasol just a thin slither of light we've got the main parasol up there that main one uh what else can we see we oh there's a little bit of light in the middle there all right um, like like the the guy on the left, we have this guy here with a bit of light. Just think about the shape. Don't think about the shape of the figure. Just the shape of the of the lighter area. Uh, we have the table. Uh, that, again, a thin slither of light. We we've got a bit of a almost like a triangle of the light um, on this drinkers drink there just not thinking about the glass it looks like a little to me if I squint my eyes looks like a little triangle um then over to the right hand side we've got a, a funny sort of a shape there defining that right hand side of this this space and over 
on the far right, well, we've got that wall, nice strong angle of that shadow, defining that shape, maybe a, a drain pipe there, uh, might split up that, that lighter area. So shapes, and that, that will probably be most of my initial sketch, just starting with that, uh, taking a scene. I know this table here, is varnished, it's brown. But I'm thinking, imagine the, the lighting, that the lighting is even stronger. Let's really emphasize those values. Let's let's make the lights lighter and make the darks darker to create that that impact of these shapes and a bit of negative painting in watercolour. So that's my plan. Let's see how we get on. The paper I'm using for this demo is Saunders Waterford. This is cold press, 300 grams. So uh, cold press, medium texture. And drawing in, sketching in those main lighter shapes. So first of all, the table in the foreground. thinking about a little bit about the perspective of it and where those slats are going to run. Next, the light on the ground just to the left of the table. So a couple of parts to this. And this is the second one. Really, they could be any, I'm following the photograph, but they could be any sort of shape really, really there to help with the composition. Now the, the left hand seated figure, bit of a curve to the back, up to the shoulders, down over to the top of the arm and then Back down the other side, the parasol, the distant parasol in the background, which I, th I think it's just in front of a TV on the uh, a TV on the uh, back wall. Now the larger one at an angle, the main one. In the middle, we've got, well, just think about the pole coming down. In the middle, we've got another little patch of light between, between the tables. Over on the right-hand side, that's that base of the wall, and then coming towards us, bit of perspective coming a bit wider out towards us, punctuated with some tops of chairs. Table on the right hand side, two more figures on that one. The guy with the blue hat, just a similar shape to the first figure. The, the, uh, the table that they're on, little thin slice of light and a, to me, what looks like a triangle as this other figure is just lifting a glass of beer up to his mouth and uh, it just creates that little bit of a triangle. Now... On the back, on this right-hand wall, there's another patch of light over there with the drain pipes coming down, and that's the sky. Just complete the shape to help me, just complete the shape of the parasol. It's probably the trickiest thing, actually, from a 
perspective point of view, just the underneath of that parasol trying to get it right because I'm I'm lower than it. I'm almost sort of looking up into up into it. Now a couple of chairs this side of the table. It's in the foreground. I don't want to put too much detail in there, but just the main the main structure of it and those the crosses, the X's on the back, then this table. And that's that's pretty much it from a sketch point of view. Um, you know, just, just those main lighter, those main lighter shapes. Just put in a few tops of the glasses on the uh, on the on the left hand table. Couple of drinks on that table. Couple of pints of beer or something. Yeah, so that that's really it from a drawing point of view. Just drawing in the shapes, uh, slightly different from what I would normally do. And I would, I would probably just paint in. Or I'd probably just draw in all of the figures in all the complete figures head body drawing all the tables and chairs the background building windows so this is quicker and it's just going to force me now it's actually it's actually in a way going to make painting easier because i'm just going to paint around now those lighter areas but thinking about the color of the area I'm painting around them and the value of the area. And I'll just get progressively darker with the paints as I go through the painting process. So it's, th this is, from now on, it's pretty similar to my normal process and the normal process in watercolor, painting light to light to dark. The palette I'm using, normal colours for me, from the top I've got neutral tint, then burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian green, cobalt green, cerulean blue which I'm using there, and a little bit of cobalt blue, then ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, windsor red, light red, cadmium orange, and lemon yellow. So this little patch of sky in the top right corner, done very quickly with that brush. I'm using a, a Raphael soft aqua brush, but really any, any large mop brush will do. This is a synthetic mop brush synthetic uh, squirrel imitation and uh, it's quite quite hard wearing gives you a good edge good point now for the stonework a bit of yellow ochre go down a brush size actually on this just give me a little bit more control So starting on the left-hand side, that, that sky is still a little bit damp. So I want that just to dry a little bit. The paper hasn't been pre-wetted. So by the time I get over to the sky with this wash, it will be a little bit dry. It might bleed a little bit. It doesn't really matter. Now a, a clean edge, a straight edge on the top left side of the parasol, following that pencil line, and then over to the sky area. And I, I've gone a little bit thicker with the paint there, less water, so it's less likely to bleed into the sky being a bit thicker All right yellow ochre so this is this is a squirrel squirrel hair brush here 
not no imitation. This is a more of a smaller brush than the first one I used. I changed my mind. Now down the left hand side, just continuing on this yellow ochre theme, which is the, to me, it's the sort of underlying color of uh, this pub, this bar. Bit of burnt sienna. Cadmium orange just to make it a bit more interesting, a bit brighter. Over the other parasol, underneath the main parasol, so that's that shape, pretty much defined. Just bleeding just a little bit too much up there between the wall and the sky, so reach out for my, a bit of paper towel just to mop that up a bit, just to stop it. Um, going too much, bleeding too much into the sky. Continue on underneath the parasol. So over the, over to the right hand side of the parasol, paint around the one of the seated figures there on the right. Up the right hand side, there's the, an angle, the edge of the lighter part on the far wall. Now back to the left hand side, I'm gonna be chopping and changing and going all over the place on this with with at this stage I've got to work fairly quickly to cover the main area and keep that wash going I haven't pre-wet the paper so it is dry paper and depending on how humid um, the the room is you know it might might dry a little bit too too quickly so I want to keep uh, working as quickly as I can to cover the the main area and prevent any lines, any any joins appearing in that wash. Now down to the ground and going a bit cooler with this wash. Really on that left hand side there's there's a sort of poster or something, but it could be anything. It's not it's it's over on the left hand side, it doesn't really doesn't really matter. But what is important is getting these shapes right and some nice hard edges. around the second shadow down towards the bottom. Keep mixing my colors up, just introducing new colors as I'm going around the scene. So there's not all one color. So from the, from the warmth of the wall down to a little bit cooler on that left-hand side. Now up into the table area, and there's quite a few uh, red painted red furniture so i'm sensing a, a bit more of a warm a warm area to this and these are the little slats on the table important here to get a good get a brush with a good edge to it to create these little marks twist the brush around Check my edge. There we are. And now fill in below with that warmer mixture. Over to the right hand side of that table. Now that, that red's gonna dry a little bit lighter. 
uh, as I come over to the right-hand side, I'm going to go a bit cooler again. Back up to the top, because I noticed that was drying a bit, so I need to keep keep dancing around the, the, the scene and uh, keep working on that top area just to prevent it, uh, prevent any lines appearing. I want it to be a nice smooth transition over these different areas from the warm to the cool to the warm to the cool. Right, down the left-hand side. That's almost, the, the shadow there was almost the shadow underneath that guy, left-hand guy under the, under his chair. We'll add in, I'll add in a bit more detail with the, with a darker, with a darker paint, smaller brush later on, but that's, that's the main underlying coat, if you like, there and the bit of a shadow on the far side of the table. Then around the other guy on the right-hand table, there's the shadow on the table just underneath the far table down between the two figures um, around the shoulder of that person shadow under the table connect down to this table up over to figure number two That just painting around. It's probably the most intricate part of this little triangle there, that glass. Hopefully I, I, I can pull it off by giving the impression of some uh, some figure over there. Now, top right corner, complete this. Go a bit cooler with this up there. Can't see exactly what it is from the photograph, but... Um, it's like the top part of that top part of that wall. A drain pipe is creating some shadow against the wall. There's a handrail or something just creating some shadow, that little line. Now the other side of the shadow and fill in fill in this area here with well it's, it's sort of slightly warm in there uh, so i've i've mixed a bit of a bit of uh alizarin crimson ultramarine blue a bit of yellow ochre it's sort of infused with lots of different colors in there and the the beauty about watercolors you've got this sort of mingling of uh, these different hues and uh, it, it can you end up with sometimes with the with the granulation quite a nice effect right continue on down to the right hand side uh, because I was quite I was quite um, I applied quite a lot of paint to the bottom that's still quite quite damp down there so I can keep going back into it adding in a bit more a bit more uh, paint paint and drier drier pigment in there just to just to add some extra interest into it so what that that's really the first stage done um, covering the, the whole paper negatively painting around these light shapes and it's at, at this early stage, it, it's starting to, we, we can see, we can roughly see the scene, the, the figures, the table, the shadow below the tables and chairs. Uh, it's just starting to appear like a, like a painting. I'm speeding up the drying process with my hairdryer because the next step, I've got to make sure everything is um, completely, completely dry. My, my paper is being held down with some masking tape around the side, which when I peel that off, gives me 
a little bit of a white edge to it, nice frame around the, the painting. I'm using a slightly smaller squirrel mop brush now and going in with darker values. So starting with the background building, there's some dark vertical line there, make this a little bit stronger, the edge of the wall. Now if, if I think I've gone a bit too dark, I can Sometimes I'll just use my fingertips just to quickly lift something up, or if it's uh, if, if I need some more extensive lifting up, I'll, I'll use the tissue or something like that. Uh, a window or something, top left corner. So I'm using mainly the neutral tint and a bit of ultramarine blue, a bit of burnt sienna. Now the underneath of the parasol is quite dark it's actually one of the it must be quite thick uh, material it's actually quite dark in there so trying to I'm trying to compensate I'm trying to think about this is going to dry lighter I've left a few little areas there unpainted which could be the the frame of the parasol these sort of spokes inside uh, just a few of those to to give the the feeling of uh, the, the the pattern of those uh, little little spokes. I'm not sure what you call them actually. Um, and then over to the right hand side, maybe a little bit lighter, but then darker, darker into the corners. The corners are a little bit darker uh, underneath this parasol. So burnt umber, a bit of everything in here. I even picked a bit of Viridian Green there. Um, but the most important thing is the value. And thinking about the how much water I've got on my brush, so I've gone a little bit drier there, less water on the brush, but darker in value up in that corner. So it's slightly darker on the left, then lighter in the middle, I guess where most of the light is and then a little bit darker in the top right corner. Now, uh, just a few details. I haven't drawn these in, but a few details of some windows or doors or whatever on the right-hand side. So that makes that feel a little bit more light, a little bit more believable as a, as a wall over there and some entrances or exits. Alizarin, Alizarin Crimson for this poster or wall wall uh, on the left hand side. And I'll just leave out some of leave some spaces I'm painted um, in the middle of this just to give the impression of uh, some some chart or some bit of bit of light shining against the chart um, now perspective think about the bottom there and the angle of that paints quite thick here not too much water on the, not too much water on the brush down to the ground and then got, got another angle to think about here there we are that's the the ground sorry I'm just you can't see what I was doing there but just strengthening up that top edge and I just 
took off a bit of paint on the brush just to give myself a flat edge to do a bit more precise painting to the underneath of the far parasol. I need, I need that good edge underneath there. And then just uh, underneath the far parasol, there looks like some sort of TV or something on that back. Well, it doesn't matter. It's just a dark shape that's going to help us a little bit, uh, give us uh, a bit of contrast in the, in the painting um, against that figure and, well, the figure below and then above the, the light of the parasol. Some trim or something on the left-hand side just going up to that figure. Now I'm going to paint in some of the faces for these figures, a little bit darker than the, the wash below. So that's that first one, and then opposite, trying to judge this, because I didn't, didn't draw in this figure, just trying to judge it, so about there maybe a little bit of light hitting the, the back of that figure. And clothing for this figure on the left. He's actually got some sort of camouflage gear on, but I'll just keep it fairly simple. Just looking at the how dark is it? Just just uh, creating that that seated figure um, down to down to the, the level of the table, and then connecting as they're all they're all sort of connected here. That figure connects the table, then then the table connected to the figure opposite. Down to the ground, there's a little back leg to the to the chair uh, just beyond this table is another chair empty chair uh, there and I'm just just looking at the photograph and still thinking about shapes not really, oh, there's a chair there, but I'm just looking at the these objects and these shapes and just replicating them, but trying to add a, a little bit of artistic flair to it. Right, now, the other figure, this figure's got a, a few handbags or, um, or shopping bags. I'll not bother with those. I'll just keep it fairly straightforward come down to the table level down to this this table here a bit of darkness coming into the uh, the table area not sure if that's um, a bit more what well, we can just maybe just see a bit more of that seated figure below the table alizarin crimson ultramarine blue neutral tint quite dark for the entrance to this area from the from the bar which is going to create a nice bit of dark against the other seated figure so just extend that over just like in the photograph there's a nice bit of darkness against the the back of this guy which just creates that that uh, that larger range of value. Um, now on the other side, so in the in between these two dark areas is that pole. It's the pole of I think it's the pole of the the main parasol. Again, I I, I could have drawn in that that um, 
or made it a bit stronger, that central pulp, but I think that's about right. So I'm going to make this figure a little bit darker. We're coming down to the chair for or some sort of um, chair legs below that figure. In a way, these these two these two figures over there they're going to be a little bit more difficult because I've got a fairly big brush compared to the level of detail I need to go to, and and this far right figure is quite tricky. If you squint your eyes, you almost think, well, it's not a figure. It's it's you. It can be difficult to make it out, but hopefully we just get in. Hopefully it doesn't. It don't, hopefully it doesn't look like an alien. I was talking about aliens earlier on, thinking about painting these shapes and imagining that you just really don't know what a figure looks like or a table, and um, just just thinking about shapes. Continue on. There's a table or a chair here, back of a chair or something, just there. Um, continue on down to this near table. I tend to, on my three mixing ones, I tend to mix the darker colors up the top, not too much water. And then that middle well is more for cooler washes and then down the bottom, normally more uh, warmer washes. The table, the, this side of the, 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 the table in the foreground, just strengthening up now the dark area between the, again, think about the shape, uh, the the dark area between one table leg and where the left hand side of the chair starts and then within the chair we've got this crisscross pattern of the back of the chair there we are and the right hand side of the chair then it just gets a lot more abstract as regards what's happening in here so i'm just going to try and wing it with a a few brush marks brush strokes that that left the left hand chair in the photograph you can sort of see that it's a chair but then as you go to the right it just becomes a little bit more difficult to see what's going on and um the complexity of looking through the gap looking through the gap at the back of this chair and, and seeing then other other elements of of chairs beyond it it uh it could drive you mad um trying to decipher all of that so i've kept it deliberately loose in there and likewise on the right hand side there's another table and chairs this this time fairly green but i, I just keeping it loose just define a a quick chair within the shadows and it's just the top of it just sort of silhouetted a little bit against the the light of the, the that right hand light coming across the 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 ground Right, smaller synthetic brush now. We're, I'm gradually going down in, in, in size um, for uh, the more, more detail work. These slats on the table. And then with perspective, it gradually becomes, over going over to the right, it becomes a little bit less vertical almost horizontal and this stage is there's 
really little water on that brush at all. Little top to the brush, a um, few details of the, the top of that wall on the right hand side. Uh, just about here we've got another doorway or something over there. Could have done that with the previous brush, but this this one will do. This uh, this this synthetic brush has long since lost its point, so it's gone a little bit flat on me. Um, but it's all right at this stage, so I can just uh, get a quite a nice sort of brush mark with it. I don't necessarily need a, a sharp point. Another drain drain pipe in the background. Winds are red. Let's make that face just a little bit brighter. Capy orange uh, for two two pints of beer, and just just continue that that color on um, into other areas. Uh, this this guy on the right hand side um, a face to face to him a little bit more on that guy there connect the that left hand side a little bit more to the umbrella the parasol and a bit of Bit more of a decoration to some more details to the, the background wall. Um, there, there's a few little, uh, a few little sort of vertical. Sorry, a few little horizontal, thin horizontal lines um, in between the these la the la large pieces of stone in this building. So I've just put in a few of those. Continue on that, continue on that uh, sort of crisscross pattern of the backs of the chairs. Uh, now on the ground, we can just see a few lines that in between the 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 slabs on the on the ground. Uh, that will just help us uh, lead our eye into the scene a bit more and some marks going across there, maybe another one here, very, very faint. I've got to keep it quite light there because that's where the light is and I can go a bit darker when that line gets into the shadow. A few more details to the, the upper part of that guy. Now underneath the parasol, there's there's a well, there's a couple of lights, but I'm just uh, adding in some fixtures in there. Need to give the far table some drinks. Now to strengthen up some of the lines underneath the parasol, some of these stays. I'll have to look up what, what they're called. Um, these spokes. I'll call them spokes. Probably totally the wrong terminology anyway quite quite tricky i think um 
the, all these lines crossing each other and thinking about the perspective. I just want to create the impression of the major. Some of them, some of them are a little bit, um, they stand out a little bit more, some of those lines underneath that parasol. Right, strengthen the pole. Perhaps a bit of brighter colour. Don't want to overdo it on the right hand side. I don't want to put too much detail over there, but just to make that stand out a tiny bit more as a chair, different colour. Some lovely colours of the tables and chairs, well, particularly the chairs in this uh, in this cafe, this bar. Need to make sure everything is very dry now because at the end I'm going to be just adding in some highlights with some white paint. But I need to make sure that the paper is completely dry. So, so for a second time, grab my hairdryer. And just make sure, particularly the areas where I think I'm going to be going with a little bit of pure white paint or white gouache. I use white gouache uh, just to make sure that's completely dry so it doesn't um, go a nasty sort of grey colour on me. And I'm going to be using a uh, very thin brush for this. or I need to have a, a brush with a good point to it. So I've got a a very fine rigger brush here from Lebenson. More more details on where to get this brush from are in the description of this video. So just a few little tops to the drinks there. I don't want to overdo overdo it with the this brush, but just picking up a few of these finer lines that would have been impossible to do any negative painting around so tops of chairs armrests there's a chair here on the left hand side just the the, the sort of curved of back of it um, the tops of these chairs here against the table And a few sparkles of light, maybe at the top of this guy, where his hat, he's got a, got a flat cap, that guy. Uh, just a little bit of light, maybe on, on his arm at the back, uh, the, the railings on the right hand side. And then some of the these spokes that are a little bit lighter. Again, they would have been impossible to paint around. So I'm just using here a little bit of, again, thick white gouache paint just to strengthen up some of these lines. Maybe a little bit of light. Not all of them. I don't want to make it too busy in there. Just create the impression of the underneath of that parasol, just a few of them.
few more horizontal, little horizontal thin lines of white on these tables and tops of chairs. Tiny bit on this side, just the top of the top of that chair. Getting that gentle curve, maybe some extra bits of light underneath the table. Ooh, and uh, I need to uh, make sure I do the pole on the far parasol. Almost looks like it's stabbing that guy in the back, but I'm sure it isn't. Um, but it's, it's, it just serves a useful purpose just to, again, connect that. And I'm just adding in a few little bits of, a few bits of finer white paint here and there. So as I normally do, just uh, at the end, just a, a quick summary of what this painting, what this demo was all about. Uh, taking a, a scene, a cafe scene here, and thinking about shapes and objects, but in particular, the lighter areas that are formed by the object and, and, and other things around the object, different colors. So that's my source photo over to my painting. Uh, let me just zoom in here a little bit more. There we go. And I, I think I achieved the aim trying to do a very quick sketch just to draw in the main areas of light. And, you, and we, I could apply that same sort of process to any other type of painting, whether it be a landscape, street scene, um, any anything, just really picking out those lighter areas and then just negatively painting around them but successively going darker and darker for each uh, each progressive stage in the painting but i achieved the aim getting in these geometric mainly geometric shapes a few sort of uh, uh, non-geometric shapes if that's the right word um, and the feeling of the feeling of bright light coming into this sort of inner courtyard of this of this cafe bar and seated figures using those, those darker values around some hard edges, darker values to create some strong, bold shapes that create a bit of impact in the painting and then progressively going darker, um, smaller brush, less water on the brush uh, to get in those darker shapes. So that's it then. A... An exercise in painting shapes uh, to create impact in a painting. Hope you liked it. Catch up with you on the next video. Bye-bye.